Namaskar. Welcome to Sci Economics Point. In today's lecture, we will discuss Cobb Douglas production function. Okay, its basic concept, assumptions, and features of Cobb Douglas production function. Okay, the Cobb Douglas production function. Okay, was proposed by Rod Wicksell. Okay, and tested against statistical evidence by Charles Cobb and Paul Douglas in the year 1928. Okay, the Cobb-Douglas production function is based on the empirical study of the American manufacturing industry. Okay, and it is a linear homogeneous production function of degree one, which takes into account two inputs, that is labor and capital, for the entire output of the manufacturing industry. Okay, and their production function is applied to all branches of optimization. Okay. and it possesses certain interesting properties which make it a very convenient choice of a researcher okay and uh, the general form of cobb douglas production function is q equal to a into l to the power alpha into k to the power 1 minus alpha or you can write a into l to the power alpha into k to the power beta okay say where k Uh, q represents the total output or you can say total production okay and l represents labor input or uh, that is the number of laborers employed k represents capital input or the amount of capital employed okay and uh, alpha okay this alpha is the partial elasticity of output with respect to labor okay here we are keeping constant capital okay then your uh, one minus alpha this represents the partial elasticity of output with respect to capital here the okay, labor is considered as constant okay and uh, what is a a is an index of a technology or you can say total factor productivity right so uh, next thing is uh, this alpha and uh, one minus alpha the the partial elasticity or you can say output elasticity okay which measures okay the percentage change in the level of output okay uh, due to percentage change in factor input okay here we are taking only two factors that is labor and uh, capital so output elasticity the that means alpha and one minus alpha it measures the percentage change in level of output due to percentage change in input that is labor or capital okay for example okay so for example if alpha equal to 0.7% what it states it states 1% increase in labor input would lead to 0.7% increase in the level of output okay uh, and the uh, 1 minus alpha equal to 0.3 that means 1% increase in capital would lead to 0.3% increase in the level of output and here we have to keep in mind that alpha plus 1 minus alpha or you can say alpha plus beta it should be equal to 1 see this is 0.7 plus 0.3 so this equal to 1 that means if alpha equal to 0.7 then 1 minus alpha equal to 0 1 minus 0.7 which is equal to 0.3 right see these are the assumptions of cobb douglas production function uh, number 1 production function of two variables that is labor and capital and it is a linear function and the uh, third one is it assumes constant returns to scale right and the uh, next one is uh, perfect competition in the market okay and next one is there is no change in technology so uh, we are assuming that uh, during the production process there is no change in technology okay then next thing we will discuss features of a cobb douglas production function okay so uh, the first feature is uh, in cobb douglas production function the returns to scale are measured by the sum of the output elasticity coefficient okay so how, what are the output elasticity coefficient alpha and beta okay so uh, next is the cobb douglas production function yields diminishing returns to each input right then next feature is the exponent of a variable input is the partial elasticity of output with respect to that variable for the cobb douglas production function 
okay and the next feature is the exponent of each variable input represents the relative income share of that factor in total product for a linearly homogeneous curve Douglas production function okay what are the exponent the exponent are alpha and 1 minus alpha okay the next is the marginal product of each input depend only on the ratio of capital to labor okay and not on the labels of those inputs right and next feature is the average products of each input depend only on the ratio of capital to labor and not on the labels of those inputs okay the next is the sum of the marginal products of labor okay times the level of labor input okay and the marginal product of product of capital times the level of capital input will be identical to the level of a output that means top class production function it satisfies Euler's theorem okay that is q equal to delta q by delta l into l that is delta q by delta l is nothing but the marginal product of labor into l plus delta q by delta k which is nothing but the mpk that is marginal product of capital into k okay so this uh cop class production function satisfies euler's theorem or which is called adding up theorem or product accession theorem okay so this is all about the origin of cop class production function assumptions and features of cop class production function in the next video we will discuss the properties of cop class production function okay